Hello, I'm Lux. I thought I stretched that out a little bit. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Yak Yakistan. I mean, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Season 7, Episode 11, Not Asking for Trouble. Okay. Yeah, we're back to the yaks, which they weren't very good the first time. They were okay in small doses, but this is a whole episode focused around them. A lot of negative thoughts in this one, just giving you a heads up. Yes, when we first met the Yaks, they were rather bullying. And now they're incredibly stubborn. And refuse to ask for help. And the moral on this one is clear as mud. Yeah, very confusing. Is it this? Are we going to get this? Is Pinkie Pie going to get punished for going against the wishes of the Yaks? Okay. I mean, the best parts of the episode were the ones that involved Pinkie Pie. And that was few and far between. Even though she was in a lot of scenes, she wasn't always... Displayed to her best advantage. Yeah. Also, this culture just... It's so foreign and brutal. <laughs> Difficult to comprehend. And still, we have this whole thing of basically every race except ponies are jerks. That seems to be the ongoing theme of MLP. The dragons are mean. The changelings were brutal. The yaks are bullies. The griffins don't value friendship. And we don't know what the sylvan changelings are like, because we saw them for all of two seconds. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Those might go back to one of... My previous theories of all the wrong that's happened since Luna hasn't been in charge of the dream world, maybe all this negativity came from that. But it sounds like she only governs over Pony's dreams. Hmm. Even though we did see that dream bubble with Discord and Smooth, a Pony still could have been having that dream. We have no definitive proof that Luna watches over the dreams of all sentient creatures. I mean, Celestia raises. The sun, that kind of affects everybody, but does Luna patrol the entirety of the dream realm? And, you know, with all the differences that we've done with the other sentient races, the other sentient races even have dreams. Yeah. It also makes me wonder what we're going to see when we go back to the Griffin Kingdom, because apparently that's changing up because of Gabby and the fact that Gilda kind of started to change things. A little bit. So that's two griffins out of the entire wonder of the griffin kingdom that fell into ruins. Mm-hmm. Also, with the way this season seems to be going, we might actually get to see that, because I didn't expect to see the yaks again for a while. No. I mean, we were hoping for more travel with the Table Tree Castle map. So this was a travel episode, which is something we wanted. Just the yaks aren't the friendliest people. I thought maybe on their home turf, they'd be a bit better because all their complaints in Ponyville was how it wasn't Yak Yakistan. Obviously, Ponyville would not be Yak Yakistan. Yeah. But on your home turf, they were still crazy. Mm -hmm. And this whole thing with the stomping and breaking things being part of the festivities. So when they were stomping and destroying everything in Ponyville, were they actually happy? And doing it as a positive custom? Yeah, that kind of brings that into question. Because if they were, that puts an entirely different light on that episode. Even though Prince Rutherford still threatened war with the ponies, or something akin to war, mm -hmm. during that episode. Yeah. Ugh. Like I said before, the only positive things I can think of with this episode was Pinkie Pie. And the wonderful moment's like, oh, yeah, um, okay, I can work with this. Snow food, S uh, snow cakes, snow spaghetti, snow sandwiches? Yeah, well, we had that in Pokemon too when Jesse made the snow rolls. Hmm, I also like sand witches, get it? Why is no one laughing? Yeah, and I thought she would have done a better job of disguising her story because, oh, I don't know, there's probably a pony children's story about the value of asking for help. Hmm, probably. Instead of making one up out of whole cloth and trying to rename everyone like a quick fan fiction rewrite. Hmm, I think you're referring to a specific movie series. Or book series, for that matter. 
among other things, though that's one of the more popular. Mm hmm I'm sorry, if you get to the point where the only thing that's recognizable about your fanfiction story is the name of the character, why not take it one step further and make it completely in original? Mm hmm You already got the talent, so why not? Yeah, coming up with a different name would be the easy part. Mm -hmm. You already did all the hard work. Yeah, and if you really need help with names, there's websites that will generate names for you. Or you can actually go to a site that specializes in names and search through meanings. Mm -hmm. I've done that before. I've even gone through translation dictionaries. Mm -hmm. As you can tell by all our sidestepping, we don't have a whole lot to say about this episode. And we're not trying to pick on fanfiction writers. Just no. one particular fanfiction writer who got published, supposedly. <laughs> yeah, one in particular. A couple of movies out there right now. I mean, it's kind of a gray area, really. Yeah, yeah, really is overall. And, Pinky, why did you take Gummy with you? Cold like that is very, very, very bad for reptiles. Yeah, they're cold-blooded, meaning their blood matches the temperature of the environment. Meaning Gummy should have been dead. Also, you've been to Yak Yakistan before. You know it's cold. No boots, no scarf, no hat, no cloak, no coat, no nothing? <laughs> I love your list there. You just kept going. I was like, when is she going to stop listing stuff? Wow. She already had this whole trip planned out in her head. <laughs> it's not that difficult to pack for a trip, especially when you know what the weather's like. But it doesn't look like she brought anything except gummy and the ribbon that Twilight made her to go, here, shut up, Pinky. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the beginning of the episode, I was like, what the heck is going on? Also, that scroll still <laughs> looks sealed when it got tossed at Twilight. Why was Twilight the person who got to read it? Or did Pinkie Pie open it, read it, and reseal it, and then give it to Twilight? Well, knowing Pinkie Pie, she could actually open it without breaking the seal. Quite likely. That's another thing that was kind of negative about this episode, is the way Pinkie Pie got invited to the festival. That was a lot of basically, please invite me to the festival. It wasn't even hints. It was just, invite me to the festival. Please invite me to the festival. Invite me to the festival. Invite me to the festival. Please invite me to the festival. Which apparently was okay by Yak standards because the reply was, Pink Pony invited to the festival. Show up now. Mm -hmm. There was nothing subtle about that. So apparently her subtle hints, which were about as subtle as a boot to the head. And another one for Jenny and the Wimp. Uh, were appropriate yak culture behavior. So she got that part right. Apparently. Yeesh. This yak culture. I don't get it, and I don't understand what its purpose is in the children's show. I think they wanted to give someone else to the writers other than Applejack to show stubbornness. Yes, but they don't seem to learn anything. Because, hmm. The yaks didn't ask for help, the yaks were patient, and everything turned out fine. Yeah. Also, apparently this happens every year? I don't think it does, actually. I think it happens mildly every year, because the kids talked about that. It's never been this bad. Yes, so this was the worst one that had ever happened. So normally they just get a little snow falling down and, oh gee, you never correlated that every year during this festival, while you're smashing stuff to smithereens and causing all these vibrations, that an avalanche happens. So not only are we portraying the yaks as bullies from the first episode that they showed it in, insular, hidebound, and stubborn, we're also showing that they're idiots because they can't correlate that this happens every single time. It's such a negative portrayal of a non-pony race. Wow, that's a lot of negativity and yeah, I get that from this episode. Well, the thing is, they're like, okay, nothing imported, no outsiders. So it's very insular. No foreign entities or products are allowed in the kingdom. So there's no exchange of ideas or any room for cultural expansion or growth because everything is rigorously mm. dictated by tradition. Might be a subtle way to get some stuff in about isolationism. They could do the isolationism without doing all the jerk face stuff. Because I could see if it was just isolationist and traditionalism. I could deal with that. Because that would be an interesting point of view to bring across. But when you add that all in with the stubbornness, 
the negativity and the overall violence exhibited. Yeah, they seem to be a pretty painful culture. <laughs> uh, well, we can only hope they can improve in the future. Yeah, and I really don't see where the lesson or moral was going because refusing to ask for help when you obviously need it no, you're supposed to be comfortable asking for help when you need it. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of understanding your own situation and having perspective, especially when somebody else has skills that you don't. To bring up a recent project Lux and I did, he had no idea I knew how to use PowerPoint. I knew she could use PowerPoint. I just didn't know she could use PowerPoint that well. <laughs> oh, I'm also stubborn in the way I think of things. I would have done this really complicated thing that was going to take me way too long. Yeah, and I'm like, hmm, if I use this symbol and I use this animation and I use this gradient color and then I loop the animation, hmm, presto, fireworks. <laughs> yep, and I would have been forever tinkering with Blender. Which uh. probably would have looked really cool, but except for my animation getting gummed up a few times, mine came out pretty cool. And a lot faster than you working in Blender. Yeah. Probably would have been a year. Yeah. So collaboration. Relying on each other's strengths. To get things done. I yeah. mean, Pinky was obviously showing that she had strengths because I think she showed them that Pink Pony by herself can do a lot. Yes, because she cleared way more snow than the rest of the yaks put together. Also, Pinkie Pie's main drill was one of the highlights of this episode. Mm-hmm. Pinkie Pie was the highlight of the episode. Yes, but specifically the main drill was one of the highlights mm -hmm. of the highlights. Yep. She showed that before, though, in the bat, uh, flutter bat episode. Yeah, but that doesn't make it any less awesome. No, no, it doesn't. She's just that awesome. And then poor, or not poor Gummy, I'm not quite sure. I think he may enjoy Pinkie Pie's antics way too much. It's hard to tell sometimes. Well, you know, he does stick around. Mm-hmm. That's kind of an indicator right there. I also love on the way back, Rainbow Dash goes, we're not playing that game. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. And the return of the spy suit, Pinkie Pie. Yes. Awesome. Also, okay, we're gonna have to do all this hard work to sneak in. And two of the three Pegasi look at each other and smile. And fly, and Rainbow Dash gently flies up and over, gently opens up the gates. And Pinkie Pie goes, um, yeah, just go inside. I'll, I'll be right after you guys. Mm -hmm. And, okay, so the Yaks were okay with accepting help, but they couldn't ask for it. So that goes back into pride again. So what kind of lesson are you trying to put across there to help people even when they say they don't need help? That can get very unhealthy and dangerous. Mm-hmm. Especially depending on the person. Quite. Pinkie Pie was very lucky that they took it so well. Yes, and that the prince took it as understanding. Perhaps he was hinting in a yak way the entire time that they needed help and that Pink Pony as an outsider could bring help, but she wasn't allowed to ask for it. So he was repeatedly telling her, we will not ask for help. Hmm. But she was allowed to do things. Like she was allowed to help dig out of the snow. She was allowed to make the snow food. She was allowed to make the snow beds. Yeah, she was allowed to help a lot. But nobody asked her to help. It might be a thing in yak culture that you can't ask for help. Well, they kept yelling that yaks don't ask for help and that yaks don't ever need help. So, yeah, but they'll accept help. So you constantly say no to something, but if someone happens to throw it your way, you'll take it. Mm. So, okay, what would be a very mild real world equivalent someone asks you if you would like a soda you say no thank you they bring you one anyways and you take a drink of it because it's already there maybe their whole culture is reverse psychology you go no i don't want this expecting someone to bring it to you but the yaks didn't do that with each other hmm. only with pinkie pie what prince rutherford said he wanted from everyone else like dance you know sway to the music stop talking story time bedtime horn bump all of that was instantly done. Mm. So if it is a reverse psychology thing, it's only with outsiders, which Yak Yakistan doesn't have much contact with, which we learned from the previous Yak episode. Mm. 
I mean, there's so much that could have been done better. They grow the vanilla beans themselves. How awesome is that? Okay, nothing imported. Yeah, so they're fully self-sustainable if you take it that route. Except that they're not because they can't deal with the avalanche and they live in the snow. And the buildings are poorly constructed because Pinkie Pie accidentally broke one. I'm surprised they survived the avalanche. Yeah, that I don't get. Maybe they're just better constructed, but maybe that one happened to have a bad patch job? I don't know. Because I was expecting the whole wall to fall down when Pinky touched it. I was too. Because that's usually the joke. Tends to be. Kind of like the stomping in an avalanche. Yes. Like someone goes, don't do anything too loud around here. It might cause an avalanche. What did you say? Mm-hmm. Or in Gravity Falls, okay, everybody be quiet and don't draw its attention to us. And then McGucket, after saying that, goes into a bunch of nonsense yelling. Mm-hmm. Oh, and another thing we should mention. Apparently, ponies are going into hiatus. This is going to be the last MLP series episode from us for a while. Yes, but do keep coming back. We do have more content scheduled for our Saturday posting schedule. And of course, Ember's reading room is not affected being reliant entirely on books. So let's wrap things up. What were your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, I meant a summary of your thoughts so people can get a clear depiction of how much you loved this episode. It's very frustrating that repeatedly we see non-pony cultures portrayed in such a negative manner. It really seems racist in a way that only ponies can be awesome. Or nice in any way. Mm-hmm. And while there were good themes that they could have worked with here, I think they were poorly built upon. And it's kind of sad that this is the one we're ending with going into hiatus. I would have been much happier if we'd ended with a royal problem. Mm -hmm, which was much better handled overall. And that's because there was fan service in that. But because it was well done. I didn't have many highlights from this, but the highlights I did get, I did enjoy. The Pinkie Pie ones, of course. Pinkie Pie was the highlight of this episode. Eh, even the part where she was a little, <laughs> she was much better than the yaks. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episode 11, Not Asking for Trouble. If you like the content on our channel, please subscribe, like this video, comment, or watch other videos on our channel. We got plenty of playlists. We get a variety of content, everything from pop culture to reading books. If you like my art, you can find it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, Google+. Plus. Really like Lux's art and want some of your own? He does do commission works. Check link for availability. Also, if you'd just like to throw money our way anyways, you can check out Patreon and Ko-fi. Patreon starts at a dollar, Ko-fi at three. Thank you again.